is Sarah Wolf from Keto with a REIT report. Do you know the best strategies for decarbonizing the built environment? Are you interested in learning more about using AI in the workplace? Do you know how to effectively align your DEI targets with your business goals? Learn the answers to these questions and much more at NAUD's REIT Work Sustainability Conference, taking place June 28th and 29th in Las Vegas. Join professionals in sustainability, CSR, communications, DEI, finance, and more for two days of educational sessions, roundtables, and meaningful networking. Register by May 24th to get the early bird rate and save on your registration. Visit go.reit.com forward slash reitworks reit report to register. That's go.reit.com forward slash reitworks reit report. Now on to the podcast. REITs really are demonstrating that as an industry, real estate is taking seriously the requests from investors and regulators and and other key stakeholders that are saying these environmental and social issues are important to us. Hello and welcome to The REIT Report. I'm your host, Sarah borkson Keto. My guest today is Jessica Long. NARIT Senior Vice President for Environmental Stewardship and Sustainability. Jessica is here to talk about how the U.S. REIT community is faring in terms of managing and reporting on its environmental stewardship and social responsibility performance. Jessica, welcome to the REIT Report. Hi, thank you. Happy to be here. So first of all, can you talk a bit about what the purpose of the NARIT ESG dashboard is? And can you explain how all the different parts come together? Sure. So the ESG dashboard was created so that NAREIT could quantify and communicate to key stakeholders how the REIT industry is reporting on sustainability strategy and performance. We partner with GeoFi to cast a wide net to use web scraping to capture key metrics for the top 100 REITs by market cap. And this includes approximately 93% of listed equity REITs by market cap as of December 31st, 2021. So this is our largest data set to really see what's happening across the industry. It's important to recognize that this is a long process. So so just like reporting on environmental and social metrics, there's a lag in the data compared to the financials, which folks are used to seeing in real time quarterly reporting. At the end of the calendar year, we identify the top 100 REITs by market cap. And then over the next 12 months, we collect data on what those REITs are reporting based on the prior year's performance. And that's why in 2023, we're looking at the largest REITs by market cap in 2021. And really, the reporting that that they produced in 2022 is on what, what they did in 2021 for the most part. And this year, we brought in for the first time GRESB data, which includes voluntary reporting from 69 public REITs, representing 56% of year-end 2022 market cap in the U.S. Because GRESB normalizes performance metrics across REITs, this is the first time we've started to look at how sustainability strategies are actually performing year over year. So again, performance data reported to GRESB by REITs in 2022 looks back at performance in 2021 compared to 2020 and gives us a a good insight into how these strategies are performing and progress towards the goals that are reported by REITs. NARIT's research and and data team works closely with GFI to quality control these metrics and then partners with the sustainability team and communications team to bring this information to the market. This supports engagement within REIT management teams to understand how their strategy compares to the broader REIT market, as well as talking to investors about how REITs are being transparent and leading in the discussion around sustainability matters. Other key stakeholders have an interest in how REITs are participating in efforts to address the financial risk to financial markets due to climate change. And all of the information in the dashboard really supports those discussions. Jessica, you recently joined NAREIT, so this is obviously the first time that you've put out the dashboard. Are there certain stats or trends that really stood out to you? Definitely. So as you mentioned, I I just joined NAREIT within the last month. Prior to joining NAREIT, I worked in in both public and private real estate and have seen a lot of of what's happening and and seeing the data aggregated in this way and understanding the progress that's been made over time since since I was just starting out and um, really doing some of these things for the first time alongside some of, of my peers to now where we're seeing real coverage across the market. And so the one that stands out the most, I think that, you know, that the industry should be most proud of is, is 100% 
percent of the of the top 100 REITs reporting publicly on ESG in, in some manner. This really shows that we've moved beyond the early days where reporting was really about leaders highlighting what they're doing to a more consistent approach to transparency around sustainability matters with investors. So this is this is really a great stat and we're seeing increases across the board in adoption of practices that that really do improve the ability for investors to make informed decisions about uh, REIT's performance due to potential risks and and how they're they're capitalizing on opportunities associated with environmental and social matters. So this is really great. I think that you know REITs really are demonstrating that as an industry, real estate is taking seriously the requests from investors and regulators and, and other key stakeholders that are saying these environmental and social issues are important to us and we want to understand and we want to hear your story on how you're managing those things. And I noticed that the dashboard says that 89% of REITs are reporting on their climate risk policy. Um, To you, does this number reflect perhaps pending regulation? Yeah, I mean, this is not surprising to me. So while the rule that is pending and being considered by the SEC spells out exactly how to disclose climate risk, there has already been existing guidance from the SEC that says material risk due to climate change must be disclosed. And so I think, again, you're seeing in these numbers that that REITs are out ahead on this and in, in saying that we are taking this, this seriously, we're doing our homework and putting in place the, the policies, procedures, and, and looking at the metrics to help us better manage this risk and, and understand what's happening within our portfolios. REITs to do this, really actively developing you know, these governance plans and policies really helps to be prepared for, for the increased uh, regulation because as reporting on climate change metrics and, and strategy goes from from being in supplemental disclosures like an ESG report to being in the financial disclosures, uh, there's an increased scrutiny, increased requirements to have governance procedures around these disclosures. And so I think that that's really what you're seeing in seeing increasing uh, participation in in disclosures and and more policies being put into place to manage this kind of alongside the the traditional governance and, and financial metrics. Are you seeing any differences in reporting based on equity market cap? Yes, this is one of the most exciting things to see in the dashboard, which is an increase in coverage for smaller REITs. So um, the dashboard shows that we've moved to 100% coverage on ESG reporting, as I mentioned, but the greatest increase is really in those REITs that are uh, under $5 billion in market cap where as recently as 2018, less than half of those entities were, were reporting, had, had any ESG reporting, and now we're seeing that at 100%. So again, this really demonstrates that as an industry, we're moving forward with uh, consistency in how we're talking to investors and, and really giving them that information to be able to compare and make investment decisions based on, on comparable data, which, which is really important. As you look ahead, where do you expect to see some of the biggest advances in environmental stewardship and social responsibility coming from? I think we're going to see that as REACH really further their understanding of the financial impacts of physical climate risk exposure, as well as the transition to a low carbon economy, there's going to be more detailed information provided to investors. This is going to include investments to make buildings more resilient, uh, emergency planning and, and engagement with the local community. This is also going to include you know, information on the investments, uh, the cost to achieve uh, net zero carbon. And so I think you're going to see a lot more details coming through as these, these plans move along and as targets turn into progress reports. And that's really going to be a change. And I think it's going to give investors a much more clear and full picture of what some of these metrics mean, where in the past we've been reporting on, on energy and carbon and we're seeing increases in, in that reporting in the metrics as well as improvements year over year. 
but year over year improvements are showing one thing and and we're going to start to see kind of, you know, investment to achieve an end goal and the cost to achieve those targets being more clearly reported on. I think also on the social side, we've seen a a, a ton of progress with uh, board diversity and the metrics are showing that the progress towards uh, 98% of REITs having at least two female board members, bringing us to 30% of board members being female, a huge, huge improvement. But I think you're going to see this number continue to rise as, as female representation across the industry continues to increase. Great. And I know we've covered a lot of material, but is there anything else you'd like to highlight from this year's dashboard? Yeah, I think the other really exciting numbers that we're seeing in this year's data is the increase in REITs reporting on renewable energy, which has doubled since 2020. For many REITs, energy efficiency was the start of this journey. Energy reductions and and efficiency improvements remain important. We understand that, you know, no matter how efficient your building is, you still are going to use some energy and the importance of that energy coming from a renewable source. So we're seeing more REITs reporting on renewable energy through both on and off-site sources. And we anticipate this to continue to to grow as we address some of the structural barriers for REITs and, and REITs continue to work with tenants, solar developers, and utilities to execute renewable transactions and, and bring that as an important part of their sustainability strategies. Jessica, thank you so much. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. You too. And to our listeners, if you enjoyed this episode of the podcast, please subscribe or leave a review on your favorite podcast platform.